Hey guys, it's Brad. Today we are going to be unboxing the Fringe Sport Mammoth Belt Squat. Uh, they had this on a really good sale recently. There is a link to my... To my... <laughs> uh, there's a link to my website where I have an article uh, about this piece of equipment. Uh, if you don't know what a belt squat is, and not everybody does, because uh, we we are in sort of a, I know people that are in lifting and have racks and have seen all the attachments. Uh, a belt squat attachment is not anything revolutionary, but it, it's kind of a niche market and, and niche activity, right? So people who don't have a rack that takes attachments or don't use attachments, uh, may not know what this is, but it comes with, uh, feels like a really heavy duty belt. We'll be taking a look at that later. Here's some hardware. Here's some of those retaining pins, much like the retaining pins that you've seen on my Titan X3 folding rack. And then the bulk of the product is these bars. Side. Now I'm going to magically open all of these and just transition so you don't have to watch me slowly opening all of this. Okay, so through the magic of video editing, we got through that in record time. We're just gonna look at the pieces here, here real quick. So you've got this main two by three uh, piece. You've got these two pieces that will bolt onto the side. You've got uh, this piece that the weights go on. We've got two little things here uh, that are threaded on the inside. We'll see where those go. You've got a, a carabiner. You've got two options. So this is made so that it will fit a three by three rack or uh, a three by two rack. And actually now that I look at it, these pieces might be a spacer for depending on which size uh, uprights you have. And then uh, it'll fit a rack with one inch holes or five eighths inch holes. And I believe five eighths, 11 sixteenths, it's close enough that, sorry that went off camera, but <clears throat> my rack takes the five eighths or 11 sixteenths. And then um, I actually have a different rack that I sell on Facebook Marketplace that is three by three with uh, one inch holes that this will also fit. And so then we also have, oh wow, check that out. Wow, this, this feels like it's made with toothpaste. Uh, the wrench, the wrench, not the, all, all the pieces feel really good. It's just, I've never seen them include uh, a little crescent wrench here and it's a 17 millimeter uh, and a 14, on one side and 14 millimeter on the other. Also have uh, these two wrenches. So actually you have all the, it comes with the tools that you need to put it together. Then we've got some bolts, some washers, some littler bolts. Um, we've got the ring that the carabiner is probably gonna clip into. Uh, we have this, a rubber circle here that we'll figure out where it goes. And then uh, Allen or a hex wrench, whatever you want to call that. So it's got, every, that's, that's cool, but it comes with the tools um, that it takes to put it together. So yeah, that's, that's what we have. Now, the first step of any gym equipment build project that I do is I take the instructions and uh, glance at them real quickly to see what it's supposed to look like at the end. And then uh, I ball them up and I throw them away and see if I can figure it out on my own. 
Uh, step two is get these back out and uh, pay attention to what's going on here. There are also some uh, choices to make, like uh, you can have it longer or shorter. Um, you can have this bar at different uh, places along here. So, I, and I don't really, I mean, we're gonna do this with trial and error. Um, I think we're going to uh, use the, the picture here for like the basic, this is what it says to do, this is where it says to put these, and then once we get it on and try it out, um, I'll start off with the configuration that it recommends, and then we might change things up based on uh, how it performs on the rack. Okay, so this thing is together, and I was going to torque everything down with the tools they included just to show you that it could be done. And it can be done. <laughs> I got everything torqued down except for the three big bolts, and uh, using these two things are, it, it's annoying the heck out of me. So I'm gonna go get some real tools to finish this off. If you don't have real tools, just to know these, I, I mean, it is turning. I am doing it with just these. Um, so yeah, you can do it with what they have here. But uh, that's it, that's how it goes together. I am going to uh, show you, I'm gonna put it on the rack, show you how it attaches come from a different angle, and then show you what this thing's all about. So one thing that I did discover is, like I said at the beginning, these were spacers. So if you have a two by three, so if you have a two by two, or a two by three, and you're gonna put it on the two inch side, you use the smaller spacer down here. If you have a three by three, or a two by three, and you're gonna use the three inch side, then uh, you use the larger spacer down here, and then, um, those, that, that spacer just bolts in from each side. If you have 11 sixteenths or 5 eighths inch holes, you use the smaller, um, retaining pin in that. If you have one inch holes, you use the larger retaining pin and there's a different hole there for that. If you're going with the three inch version, if you're going with the three inch spacer, you turn this two by three inch tube, uh, on its side, well, on it, I mean, not on its side, but you turn it where the three inch side is up and down. And then if you had used the two inch spacer, this metal tube would be turned the other way so that the two inch was in between there. And then, ah, actually, you know what? I found an extra washer that I was looking for earlier. Let's see where I missed the washer. I bet it's under this thing. This might be an extra washer because I got a washer in there. Anyways, we'll see. So if you're using the three inch version, there were longer bolts to go through here. If you were using the two inch version, there were shorter bolts to go through there. So that's the, that's what these extra pieces are. One inch hole, two inch uprights. So those will be going back in the box. Um, the belt, I'm going to take this tag off, but I wanted to show it to you first. The belt says it's rated for six, well, it says weight capacity 600 pounds, but then it says 600 pounds with a circle and a line through it. So weight capacity 600 pounds, no 600 pounds is what this tag says that I am removing there. Uh, like I said, you've got this... Um, Carabiner locks in there like that. 
and then you'll see when we get this thing up and going, you put this belt around your back and lock in to the machine like that. All right, let me go get real tools to torque these bolts down and then we'll attach her on there and see what we got. So we got this bad boy built. I, I gotta tell you, man, this thing is solid. Um, it is not, it's not like chintzy or like shaky. This thing is, this thing is well built and solid. I'm gonna go ahead and hook this guy on here. Let's put it, let's try it right out there. Right there. Lock that bad boy in. And that's what she does. So you put the weight on there, you put your, and that's it. You could also do some other things. So you could do some rows with this. I could grab a handle over here off of my uh, pegboard, do rows. You can do like upright rows, but the, the belt squat is for uh, squatting with less pressure on your back, upper back, so you don't have to you squat more. I'm just gonna throw a weight on here to show you how it sits. And um, I might turn this guy sideways because I think it's just, I mean, yeah. So if we take this and go back this way with it, then that weight should sit perfectly there. Yeah, there you go. So that's a, a 10 pound bumper plate. You put a 45 on there, whatever. And uh, I've never done belt squat before, so we're going to uh, figure this out together. But essentially, you squat down, get your belt attached, and then that's it right there. So you can see it's the, the weight is resting on my hips, my upper back, my arms, and you can probably see why I got this because it's gonna help with my rehab of my distal biceps tendon rupture. And so you can kinda lean back and then you squat down, up. It's gonna take me a while to get used to this. There you go. There she is. It can help you get into that really bottom, nice bottom position without worrying about that stress on your upper back. But that's, that's what this is for guys. And if you're like, well, Brad, that's, that's great. That's a cool piece of equipment. It's really helping you open your hips at the bottom. I don't have a rack to attach it to. They actually also make a, a wall attachment for it. So uh, you can get this and um, they have a piece where you can attach it straight into your wall. And like I said, you can load this guy up. You see, I'm really feeling this in my quads, I'm trying to get it correct. I can probably shift my weight forward to feel it in my hamstrings and glutes. Oh yeah, man, and that's just with whatever I got on there. They, all, they also make a kickstand for this thing. Um, I've also seen people do lunges with it. Like that. Uh, again, I'm gonna have to figure out how to use this thing because like I said, I've never done it before. But that's it. There she is, that's what she's used for. Um, if you've been thinking about getting a, a belt squat attachment for your rack, I highly recommend this one. 
If you don't have a rack, you can attach it straight to the wall. Um, if you do decide to get this one, uh, go ahead and click on the link in the description. That will take you to my website where you can see the article uh, I posted about it. And if you purchase through my affiliate link, obviously uh, I get some of their products at a discounted rate. So I can show you more things like this that attach to the rack. All right, guys, keep training and I'll see you in the next video.